Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. It is me, Allie. Today we are filming a very casual, very casual, chill Q&A. This is going to be like a chit chat podcast style type video where I'm just basically talking to the camera the entire time. These Q&A videos are pretty much my favorite videos to watch here on YouTube as of lately. I just find them so calming and so therapeutic. I will usually just put on some ear pods and just listen to them as I am doing some housework or going for a walk or whatever it may be. So I hope that you guys enjoy these types of videos as well. Today I'm going to be doing more of like a fourth trimester postpartum update type of video. I asked you guys to ask me some questions on Instagram and I compiled a list of like the most popular questions and some interesting questions as well. After this video if you have any other questions or concerns just make sure to ask them in the comments below and without further ado before we jump into this video I did just want to say I know that my channel is like very heavy on mom slash baby content recently however it won't be like that for long right now with me just adjusting to being a mom of two these are just the easiest videos for me to film and to create for content I really 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 love filming like try on videos and testing videos and tutorials and taste tests and like all that DIY content however those videos take me weeks to film like days to film all of the clips and then putting them all together and processing them and then doing the voiceover and editing the thumbnail they are just very lengthy videos and very time consuming videos for me and i just don't have that kind of time right now so if you're not into like mom and baby content i completely completely hear you this might not be the video for you but i promise you my channel is not turning into like a mom and baby inspired channel i will be getting back to like my normal content i just have to give my mind body and soul time to like truly adjust to being a mom of two so now that i got that out there let's jump on into the questions question number one this first question i received the most out of any other questions that were submitted to me and it just makes me really warm and fuzzy inside to think that so many of you guys cared enough to ask this question the question is simply how are you mama? It just really makes me happy to think so many people are so in tune to see how the mom is doing postpartum. I feel like this generation is really caring in that aspect whereas previously or years ago, maybe like decades ago, most people really only focus on the baby after you have a baby and it's always baby this, baby that, but never about the mom. I think that this generation is equally as in tune to like how the baby is doing and also how mama is doing. And to answer that question nice and simply, I am doing great. Thank God. Like I honestly thank God every single day that I am doing so, so well this postpartum. My first postpartum experience with our toddler Landon was very very different I started experiencing PPD and PPA within a week of having him I was already in therapy within two weeks after having him I just went through I went through a struggle and so many people go through that struggle and I honestly do not wish that on my worst enemy it was probably the worst feeling I have ever experienced in my entire life however this time around I really like again knock on wood thanking god i am counting and blessing all of my lucky stars out there i am feeling really really great this time around i feel like the transition from zero to one was so much harder than the transition from one to two and i don't know if i'm just like already in the thick of it and i'm already like kind of on the go with a toddler at home and you're already just like doing all the things i feel like some days are definitely easier than others for sure and i already cried multiple times and ellie is just a month old i've had my really tough days but overall i feel like i'm just doing so much better this time around i'm just mentally physically emotionally just so happy inside and even on the days that are like really tough that i cry it all out by the end of the day i'm feeling like so much better and i'm just ready to start a brand new fresh day the next day whereas my first time around because i was going through so much ppd and so much ppa if you guys aren't familiar that's postpartum depression and postpartum anxiety because i was dealing with so much of that even at night i wasn't able to like train my brain to say tomorrow will try to be a better day it was just really tough all around for a while and then it got better but this time around knock on wood i know that like ppd and ppa can kind of like hit you at any time within that first year and i'm praying that that does not happen because again i don't wish that on my worst enemy but this time around i'm feeling really good i'm just i'm i'm really just in love with my little family 
This next one is going to be a two-parter, part number one, what inspired Ellie's name, and part number two, what inspired your son Landon's name. So let's start with Ellie. Ellie's name is inspired by the character Ellie from the movie Up, the Disney and Pixar movie Up. I just love that movie so hard. It is one of my favorite Disney and Pixar movies out there, and I just love the character Ellie so, so much she's so kind she's so caring she's so loving she's so adventurous and i just thought it would be the absolute perfect name for our daughter so our daughter's name is inspired by ellie from the movie up and our son's name is inspired by landon carter from nicholas sparks book a walk to remember one of my favorite books from my absolute favorite author same with him he is also kind of like punky in the book but then he turns like so loving and understanding and caring and like goes out of his way for everybody and i just really really resonate with both of those characters so ellie kind of like disney inspired and landon is definitely nicholas sparks inspired this next question, I got this question so many times. What was baby's name going to be if baby was a boy? So if you guys are new here, we don't find out the gender of our babies. We have two kids at home and both pregnancies. We decided not to find out the gender. We just wanted that beautiful surprise upon delivery. And let me tell you, a billion out of 10 would recommend waiting to find out the gender. The surprise is just nothing like you will ever experience in your entire life i know i sound like a broken record and i've talked about it so many times on my channel and on instagram but that feeling that you get when you finally meet your baby for the first time and then your partner is like it's a boy it's a girl i get absolute chills so we did have two names planned out because we didn't know if it was going to be boy or a girl we ended up having a girl so it is ellie autumn sawing and if we had a boy it was going to be noah christian fu chang i feel like i need to elaborate on the previous question before we jump on into the next question i feel like people watching this video are probably like yo that's a lot of names for one kid. So basically to break it down nice and simply, our children both have a first name, they have an Americanized middle name, they have a Chinese middle name, and then they have a last name, our last name. I'm not going to share our last name on here just for privacy reasons, but my husband is 100% Chinese and in the Chinese culture, it is custom for the father or the mother's parents to pick out a Chinese middle name. So they picked out Fui and they picked out Sawing. So basically our kids have four names. However, on their birth certificate, it is five because Sawing and Fui are both two different words. So again, we have Landon, Carter, Fui, blank. And then we have Ellie, Autumn, Sawing, blank. It's wild. <laughs> This next question perfectly aligns with the sponsor of today's video. Originally, when I was coming up with concept ideas on how to integrate this sponsorship into today's video, I just couldn't figure out how to do it organically and mention it naturally. I was just going to do like a B-roll at the beginning of the video, and then I got this question and I was like, this is absolutely perfect, like absolutely perfect. So I will read the question to you and then I will talk to you about the sponsorship for today's video. The question is, are you experiencing any postpartum hair loss? And if so, how are you combating it? And the sponsor for today's video is none other than one of my favorite brands to work with slash one of my favorite brands to use in my every single day life, Function of Beauty. I love Function of Beauty so, so hard. If you guys are unfamiliar with Function of Beauty, I'm going to link all their information in the description below. Basically, they are a fully customizable hair care line they believe just like skincare your hair care should not be a one size fits all you should be able to customize it and tailor it to your wants and your needs and that's exactly what function of beauty does all you need to do is go to their website and fill out a simple 60 second survey that talks about all of your wants and your needs while using these products you can talk about your hair type you can talk about goals that you want to see out of using their products and you can even customize it down to the color the name on your bottle and the scent that you are choosing Using to have so I'm going to show you what mine looks like right here and then I will share with you the customized version that I went with this is the shampoo they even send you these really adorable stickers that just bring your shampoo and conditioner to the next level like you can see mine says function of Allison that is my shampoo and here is my conditioner freaking love function of beauty so 
so much again function of allison these bottles are just so cute and then they also send you spouts to use so you kind of have control over how much you are using i pretty much will go through one of these every like two to three months i only wash my hair like once or twice a week at most so this really truly lasts me so so long a little bit goes a very long way i'm going to talk to you about how i customize mine now and then i will go into answering that question so for my hair profile i say that i have wavy medium normal type hair and the goals i always pick the exact same five goals every single time my goals are always anti-frizz deep condition lengthen shine and strengthen and for the fragrance i chose pure perfection in a medium scent i just i wish we had smell -o vision because the way that these smell and the way that these make your hair smell is just unmatched so needless to say i love function and beauty and Side note, out of all the brands that I've ever worked with before, this is a brand that I would say most of you guys reach out to me afterwards saying that you like used my link and tried their products out and absolutely love them and it just makes me so, so happy inside because like you guys know, I only work with brands that I love and I only promote products that I love and use in my everyday life and this is a product that I use all the freaking time so if you guys are interested in checking out function and beauty please check out the description below and i will give you a little bit more information on how to save some money off of your hair care now it's easier than ever to try function of beauty's top rated signature hair duo you can get 20 percent off your first 16 ounce custom set when you click my link and subscribe i'd also recommend becoming a member to get lots of exclusive perks like free shipping now to answer the question, I have not lost any hair as of yet due to postpartum. I don't believe that starts happening until like the four, five, six month mark after having a baby. With Landon, it was right about like the five month mark that I started losing my hair. And that is an understatement. My hair was coming out in chunks chunks i remember just like running my fingers through my hair and i swear half of my head of hair was in my hand i would get out of the shower and i would look at the drain and be like is that normal to be losing that much hair and it is very normal it is a very common thing that happens to mothers after they have a baby and unfortunately you just kind of have to ride out the wave after i started losing all of my hair with landon that is right around the time that i started using function of beauty like i said this perfectly aligns with the sponsorship of today's video although using their products is not going to stop postpartum hair loss that's just inevitable it's going to happen if it is going to happen this truly i truly 100 percent believe that my hair started thriving and growing back so strong because i was using these products i have been using function of beauty products exclusively in my hair for just about two and a half ish to three years now and again my hair has just been thriving ever since i started using them i actually in the process of having landon all the way up to having ellie was able to grow my hair so long that i could donate it for the second time i actually grew my hair out so much that i could donate over 13 inches two different times in my life now and i just truly believe that function of beauty has a lot to do with that it is helping my hair to be strong healthy it is just helping it to be in its best state possible so i have not lost any hair yet i know it is going to come but i'm so happy that i have all my function of beauty products to kind of like aid me in the whole process this question any mom guilt with formula feeding this time around versus breastfeeding the first time around and the answer to that question is heck no i'm experiencing zero mom guilt right now and i'm also experiencing zero regrets honestly choosing to formula feed has been one of the best decisions of my entire life if you guys know you know i had a very terrible very 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 terrible experience kind of like traumatic almost experience with breastfeeding the first time around i would say 99 0.999% of my PPD and PPA stemmed from my really, really tough breastfeeding journey. So we made the decision very early on this time around that we were going
going to be formula feeding from the start and i have to tell you i have been thriving with that decision truly if you are breastfeeding if you are formula feeding if you are bottle feeding if you're doing a little bit of like a hybrid we're including all of it go you go little rock star like you are the real mvp you are choosing to nourish your child you are choosing to feed your child and you're amazing for that fed is best in my personal opinion i know a lot of people think breast is best and i think that there are so many incredible benefits to breastfeeding however fed is best i just it's not for everybody and it just was not for me if you are breastfeeding exclusively you're amazing we breastfed landon pretty much exclusively for 10 months and it was probably one of the toughest 10 months of my entire life i definitely definitely shouldn't have done 10 months i probably shouldn't have even done like 10 days but i was so stubborn and i just like kept forcing myself to do it for what reason i honestly have no idea but this time around like i said we made the decision very early on to formula feed and it has been one of the best decisions of my entire life i am connecting just as much with ellie as i did with landon if not more because i'm just in such a happier place mentally physically and emotionally so yes i could go on and on and on about this forever but i have no mom guilt when it comes to formula feeding my child it has been a blessing this next one what is ellie's newborn schedule um i don't want to say it's non-existent because we do follow a schedule it's just very very loosely followed right now we kind of just are following the wake eat play sleep schedule so she'll wake up we'll feed her we'll play for a bit and then she'll go back down for a nap and we just follow that all the way until nighttime where she does her nighttime sleep i feel like this first month it is really just about figuring everything out or refiguring everything out i feel like i forgot almost everything about the newborn stage with landon and we're definitely just like in adjustment mode right now kind of like in like survival mode right now so we don't really like strictly follow a schedule we're just kind of going off of baby's cues for when baby is hungry when baby is sleeping and in between between. we're just like really trying to keep her up as much as we can to play with her and read with her and sing with her and cuddle with her and all of those things i think that we will probably get more strict with the schedule around like two and a half to three months i believe that's when we started getting pretty strict with the schedule with landon and it worked really really well for landon so we're hoping that it works just as well with ellie we're also not planning on sleep training her until she's like three and a half, four-ish months. I know that that's one of the questions and I'll touch upon that actually next. But yeah, as for a schedule, we're in survival mode right now. She's just a month old, but we will get more strict with it. If you guys Google like newborn schedules, a ton of them will come up. We're just kind of like loosely following them. To piggyback off of the previous question, the next question, are you going to be sleep training Ellie? And if so, what method so we are going to be sleep training ellie i think that we'll probably wait until she's about like three and a half to four months old that is what our pediatrician recommended and we will be using the method that my pediatrician recommended as well which is the ferber method if you guys are unfamiliar with the ferber method i will link some articles in the description below basically it is a modified cry it out version i know that that is for some parents and it is not for others i think if you are planning to sleep train a child there are so many different options out there and just pick one that works best for you and your parenting style for us the ferber method it is where it is at for us again if you guys are unfamiliar just check out some of the articles or just google the ferber method it is a modified cry it out version where you put baby to sleep drowsy and then you just go in different increments so day one if they are crying after you put them down you let them work it out for about five minutes you go in there you rub their stomach you talk to them very quickly and then you just exit then if they're continuing to cry you go in there after 10 minutes and you're just reassuring them that they are cared for and loved and you are still there for them but it's just helping them to learn how to self-soothe which is 10 out of 10 would recommend that your children know how to self-soothe to put them to sleep so we will be training her around three-ish four months with Landon we waited until he was like 10 months old and it was brutal it was just we were first-time parents and we were just figuring everything out this time around we're like um can we train her after like two weeks totally kidding we wouldn't do that but like the second time around you're like all right when are we gonna start this whereas with landon i think we started sleep training him 18 different times and never followed through with it because it is hard i'm not gonna lie to you sleep training is so 
hard, but it really only takes most kids about three to four days to adjust and then they just get into such a good sleep routine and that is just so important, not only for baby, but also for parents, mom and dad's well-being. So yes, we will be asleep training her. We'll be doing it around three and a half, four-ish months and we'll be using the Ferber method. This next question kind of pulls at the heartstrings a little bit, but I'm gonna get a little serious. I'm not gonna like fully answer this question because I'm doing a dedicated video. I'm actually planning out that video right now. But the question is, am I going back or are you going back to teaching once your maternity leave is over? And the answer is yes, I will be going back to teaching. However, I'm just gonna do a whole entire dedicated video on this topic and I'm gonna like title that video, Dear Teachers, You Are Not Alone. If you guys have just been reading anything in the news lately or listening to the news or just like seeing anything that is going on in today's day and age with teachers, it is just a really sucky time to be a teacher right now. And I just, I hate saying that. This is my 13th year, I believe. I think this is my 13th year teaching and I love my job so much. Like it is my dream job. However, it is just not what it used to be. And I'm gonna kind of go into like all the specifics in that video, but just to answer this lightly, it is a really tough time to be a teacher right now. It is just, it is, it is really, really rough. I miss loving my job. I don't hate my job by any means. I still love my job. I love teaching. It's just right now, it's not even teaching. It's not at all about teaching. It is about standards and it's about, it's just, it's about administration and it's about people telling you what you should do, how to do it, when to do it, why to do it. It's, there's no really creative aspect anymore. It's just turning teachers into robots. It's turning teachers into everything other than being a teacher. Like I literally feel like I'm wearing all of the hats right now and it's just overwhelming. I feel like I'm just having boulder after boulder after boulder thrown on me and it's just like weighing us down and down and down. Right now, teachers are just leaving in drones. There is just no help out there. We have no substitutes and it's just overwhelming. It's exhausting. I just wish it was about teaching again. When I first started teaching like 12 or 13 years ago, however long I've been teaching for, there was just such a creative aspect to it. And it's just so sad that, I can't speak for everybody, but I know in like my district, in my state, that creative aspect is taken away. You don't have like any say in what you're doing anymore. It's just all told to you and you're just kind of a robot. And I hate even saying that, but again, I'm doing a full dedicated video on this topic and it should be out pretty soon. But yes, I will be going back to teaching. It is my job, it's my career, it's like my financial stability and it is like my medical stability as well. But it's just, it's, it's a tough time to be a teacher right now. If you're a teacher watching this, I'm sure you guys can understand. If you're not, I know there's people like shaking their head and rolling their eyes being like, oh, these teachers, they have it so easy and they have the summers off and all these vacations. Like, if you only knew, honestly, if you only knew. Are you stopping after Ellie or do you want more kids? We are actually planning on stopping after Ellie. Ellie has completed our family. We have always only wanted two kids and now we have a boy and we have a girl. It's pretty much like the American dream. So yes, we will be stopping after Ellie. She has completely completed our family and we are just so in love. Self-care as a mom of two. Self-care can come in so many different shapes and forms. For me personally, self-care recently has been listening to like podcasts or audiobooks, getting outside for at least like 10 to 15 minutes a day to get some fresh air, taking baths at night, doing like solo trips to Whole Foods or to Target, just doing like little solo grocery runs. I love to bake and to cook. So that is huge self-care for me, just having like time alone in the kitchen to be creative, doing DIY projects. So my one like suggestion would be if you are fortunate enough to have the help at home, don't be too proud. Take that help. Even if it's just for like a 10 to 15 minute walk outside to get some fresh air, don't be too proud. It takes a village. It truly like one thing that I realized, especially with having two kids, it takes a village. And if you are fortunate enough to have that help at home, just ask for the help and utilize that help. Whether it is just going in the kitchen to bake brownies all by yourself while you're listening to like true crime podcasts, just do it. Like you do you, do what you have to do to really give yourself some self care because 
because you cannot be the best mother you can possibly be unless you are the best version of yourself that you can possibly be. I'm going to link a video in the description below to answer this next question. The next question is, what are your newborn must-have purchases? What are your newborn essential items? And I actually just filmed an entire video dedicated to this question. So I'm going to link that right in the description below. It talks about all of my favorite newborn purchases and all of my must-have mom essential slash newborn essential items. I also got this question so many times and you guys are just you're so sweet. So many of you guys want to know how Landon is doing and thank you so, so much for asking about him. Landon, he's doing really great. And I feel like I don't wanna jinx that and I know that that could change at pretty much any given second, but he has been doing exceptionally well in his role of being a big brother. We decided at the hospital that we weren't going to like force Ellie upon him. If he was interested in like being involved, awesome. If he decided like he wasn't really interested and he wanted to do his own thing, that's awesome as well. It'll all kind of like work itself out eventually. But since we took Ellie home, he has been phenomenal. Like we're, we're, seriously so grateful for that he is really loving his role of being a big brother he loves hugging her and holding her and like kissing her on the head and then there's other times that he wants absolutely nothing to do with her and we very much respect that i think something that has really helped us with the transition i follow big little feelings on instagram i will link them in the description below favorite instagram parenting instagram page of ever i've learned so much for them and one of the big things that they talk about on their instagram page is if you are bringing a newborn home try to do the 15 minutes of uninterrupted mommy time or daddy time with your infant your toddler your child however old they might be even a teenager for that matter so basically every single day we try to do at least like 10 to 15 minutes of mommy land in time whether we're just reading a book together whether we are playing cars whether we're playing hide and seek going for a walk whatever it may be it is completely uninterrupted no phones no screen time just me just Landon us doing whatever he wants to do for those 15 minutes and then I will take Ellie for another 15 minutes and Adam will go so we'll have daddy land in time during that time and he's still getting that like mommy daddy alone time but then at the end of the night we always try to do at least a half hour of like full family time where it's Adam myself Ellie and Landon and I think that that's really helped us Landon is still feeling like very valued because he's still getting that one-on-one -on -one time with mommy and with daddy but at the same time he's also having that family time as well so so far he's been doing he's been doing really well we're just like thank you <laughs> he's been doing really well how is sleep going um <laughs> figuring it out ellie is pretty good with nighttime sleep like four out of seven days a week maybe like five out of seven days a week she's pretty good with nighttime sleep we usually put her down around like 8 8 30 and then we usually feed her twice in the middle of the night and she's overall pretty good with nighttime sleep we do have to like work on getting her to self-soothe we're not there yet daytime sleep she's great with naps if she is napping on you she will take like a three hour nap on you which i personally love i live for skin to skin time but I can't do that for every single nap. So we're trying to do at least like one nap in the bassinet a day, even just for exposure. Sometimes she'll nap in there for like 50 minutes. Other times it is five minutes. What our goal is eventually for her to take like all of her naps in the bassinet slash in her crib when we transition her into our crib. We're not there yet. It is a serious, serious battle. She fights the bassinet so much during the day. And yeah, we're just, we're working on it she's just a month old like i'm giving ourselves some grace i'm giving her grace i'm giving myself grace i'm giving my family grace but like sleep it could be worse could could be better and last but not least the final question how is your postpartum body postpartum i just got so new england while trying to say that i am from rhode island and my new england accent just came out strong while trying to say that how is your post postpartum body after baby i still kind of had a little twang of new england in there so working on the postpartum body but it is beautiful no matter what i definitely don't fit into 
any of my pre-pregnancy clothes. We're wearing a lot of loungewear. We're wearing a lot of comfy clothes and we are loving every single second of it. I did get like a ton of stretch marks towards the end of my pregnancy. So let me just like show you because I have no shame in my game. This is what my stomach looks like right now. I feel like I'm very proud of it. Here we go right there. And if I get close, I don't know if you can like truly see, but I have a ton of stretch marks right over here. Is that even focusing? I can't tell. So yeah, there's there's some stuff to work on, but I love my body so much more than I ever have loved it before. Right over here, I think is the weirdest part. My belly button, especially, it is so deep. I've never seen my belly button like so deep and it's kind of like dark inside as well. I'm sorry if this is like grossing a ton of you out. I also have this line that goes like all the way up my stomach. If you squish it together, there's just like, there's there's stuff going on. I'm not mad at it. I'm not mad at it at all. I just think my body is beautiful. Like this body created two beautiful humans, like the coolest humans I've ever met in my entire life. And whatever, like honestly, I'm just wearing a lot of high-waisted items lately and just being very comfy and cozy and not worrying about it too much. Like this body, I'm more proud of my body now than I have ever been of my body in any stage of my life.